right. God bless each and every one of you. Uh, God bless you guys. Uh, this may be a two-part series. Um, I guess the first aspect of um, this video that I want to cover is um, just uh, certain um, steps, certain things that we can do that can aid us, you know, when we are when we find ourselves in these situations, in, in these life, uh, in these conditions, uh, brother Hamilton, God bless you, my mighty man of valor, brother, <laughs> in the name of Jesus, God bless you, man. Um, wanted to come on live real quick so I can uh, pretty much talk about some things that have been on my heart. Um, I've seen uh, brothers and sisters in the faith struggling with this. Um, and so I do think this is an important topic to uh, help in the exhorting and the edifying of my brothers and sisters in the faith. And so I, I want to know, brothers uh, and sisters, can you guys hear me well? Um, uh, kind of set this up real quick and I didn't run through all my checkpoints. <laughs> but uh, OK, OK. God bless you. God bless you. Um, all right. So um, I, I want to talk about a few things. Uh, I'm going to come from the uh, from the from First Peter, First Peter chapter three, and I want to kind of dissect something and uh, ultimately talk about some key things that are going to help us when it comes to uh, the topic, which is unequally yoked. Of course, this is episode nine of the raising up Christ-centered marriages. We 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 want to be individuals, of course, that are centered around Christ. Christ, Jesus Christ, the, the, the God of all creation is the center of all of existence. Him uh, and his Father and the Holy Ghost, the, 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 the triune nature of God, the triune nature of divinity is the center of the universe, contrary to what many people have spoken, have said in the past in reference to, you know, and a, a type of anthropocentric type mentality to where the, the human beings are the center of creation, which is not true. Uh, we did not create ourselves. The earth did not create itself. The universe did not create itself. We are products of a higher power, products of uh, Jesus Christ, the Father, who are the originators of everything intelligent, everything complex, everything, whether it be the smallest thing to the highest thing, everything that is created stems from them, stems from within them. Uh, and I, I, I like to say this all the time. I got this from my pastor who says uh, God doesn't have a Lowe's or, or a Home Depot that he can go to to build the universe. It, it literally came from within him. And, and so that's a blessing. That's that's definitely a blessing. God bless each and every one of you guys. Um, so we're going to be talking about unequally yoked. Um, like I said before, this is probably going to be um, uh, episode one, in a sense, of this topic. All right. So I'm going to start off at First Peter chapter three, which says, uh, "Likewise, likewise, ye wives, be." Uh, in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, uh, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Uh, and and it, so it, it's going to describe something here. It says, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, um, whose adorning let it not be uh, that of the outward adorning of uh, of plating of hair and of wearing of gold and of putting on apparel. And so what is it talking about here? I, I want to kind of break this down. But before I break it down, I want to uh, kind of just give a backdrop here. Uh, a backdrop, of course, we're in a society, we're in uh, a nation, we're in this world to where it's very uh, sexually inspired, sexually driven, uh, 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 sexually saturated. And, and so we have many people making decisions to, to marry, to come together uh, when we don't have a proper yoke. And so 
let, let me define really quick what uh, uh, unequally yoked is. Unequal, unequally yoked is when you have two individuals that have two standards of uh, 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 two standards of existence in a sense in which they um, live by. Um, you know, so what would be considered unequally yoked, um, according to the term, would probably be uh, a person that is unsaved uh, marrying a person that is saved in Christ Jesus, a person who has a covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ through the death, burial, and resurrection, through their commitment to the Lord, to, through their repentance from uh, the old life and the induction into the new life. And so uh, one of the, so unequally yoked is basically people who don't live or obey the same standard. And so uh, one of the things that God, you know, requires from us as far as uh, human beings, um, human beings that are in him, he, des he desires unity. And so one of the more powerful scriptures that uh, my brothers and I, um, you know, and sisters um, quote so often is uh, the, the psalm, the, the famous psalm, uh, uh, chapter 133, where it says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers or brethren to dwell together in unity. So that is describing a, a very uh, uh, inner agreement. It's a, an internal agreement, a, a, a beyond social agreement. It, it, this is something more spiritual. This is something more connecting that God desires that men and women have that men um, uh, have uh, to a degree with uh, their uh, brethren in the faith, you know, that husbands and wives have. So every level of agreement or, or, or connection has a level of unity that God desires to see. So unequally yoked, um, there are a couple different de definitions. For this episode, I I'm probably going to talk about maybe two of them. Uh, one, uh, one definition, as I was saying, is, you know, completely different standards. And we are trying to make something like marriage work, even though we live on two planes of existence. Uh, the, the, the Christian, you know, so, some people may say, why, why is that wrong? Why is that so wrong for a Christian and a non-Christian to be together? Well, one of the reasons why that's wrong is because the Christian fears the Lord. And so therefore there are things that the Christian won't do. Um, or, 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 and so the Christian is governed by a different set of laws, spiritual laws, uh, and, uh, and a person that fears God. So the unsaved person uh, does not have a healthy, does not have a healthy or a fear of the Lord. You know, and so that person's default can uh, be to uh, can be um, can, can go drastically in a direction that is uncharted. And so what am I talking about when I'm when I'm saying uh, default? I'm saying depending on the adversity, depending on the situation, a person can be led or governed or inspired to do something that is out of their character uh, because they don't have a gauge. They don't have a gauge. They don't have a standard. They don't have, you know, something that holds them accountable. They don't have any more, like any more morality, uh, a moral system. Not that they don't have morals, but they don't have a, a person that holds them accountable to the morals from a divine sense. And so God is wanting us to come and know him. And when we read his word, we, we, we uh, understand the mind of God so that we can uh, ultimately live life the way he desires. And so we want to be equally yoked. We don't, we don't want to, um, uh, I, 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 well, matter of fact, let's jump into the scripture real quick before I give any, um, testimonies or anything like that. Um, well, the scripture that I just read in uh, verses one through three, as far as unequally yoked, 
this is a depiction of that. And so many times people can say, well, the Bible doesn't talk about unequally yoked. And the Bible kind of gives a reference to it here and there. You know, I know there's a scripture in maybe first Corinthians, you know, chapter six, where it talks about, um, you know, that we should not, um, you know, fellowship with unbelievers to a degree or whatnot. So, you know, it doesn't really talk about unequally yoked um, in reference to relationships, but it's talking about it right here. So uh, what is it saying? Well, this is saying, as I just read in verse one through three, of uh, chapter three of first Peter, it is saying here that, uh, for example, it's given an example that the wife may be the believer and the husband may be the unbeliever. And so it's saying that with your chastened uh, conversation coupled with fear, it's saying that uh, a, a woman who is saved in this scenario um, if when you speak as if you fear the Lord, when you speak in such a way, when your attitude is in such a way to where it, it demonstrates your reverence and respect for your spouse, even if they're unsaved, there is uh, a, there is a favor uh, that is also attached to that. There is an identity that is attached to that. And and so it, and it also is talking about how uh, the, the spiritual aspect of this woman, as an example, because we can flip this and talk about um, the, the man. But let's talk about the woman Christian in this example, because it's depicting that. And so it's talking about the woman who is not a woman who is so infatuated, so consumed, uh, so outer appearance driven uh and what we what we're seeing is that this type of attitude this type of behavior uh, this type of appearance uh, demonstrates uh, a value in a high from a higher position like we, a person or a woman in this way, she believes in something greater. So the women of this world, they value their exterior. They value how they look. They value to such a high degree, very vain things that will ultimately deteriorate uh, eventually. Uh, but it's saying here, the virtuous woman or this woman of valor, this woman who is a Christian, she is more concerned with her inner beauty. Uh, and so she is, uh, w uh, by the favor of God, may win her husband to the faith because of her fear of the Lord, because of her words that are coupled in the fear of the Lord, and also the fact that she is not consumed with earthly things like the other women, like the foolish women of the world. And so... I, I want to three the three points that I'm going to be talking about. God bless each and every one of you that just joined in. The three points that I'm going to be talking about is one, prayer. The first one is prayer. Prayer is one point. The second point is attitude uh, and behavior, and the third point is the manifestation of the favor of God on your life. So those three points are vital points that will bless your life. Uh, and not only that, also um, bless your life to the degree that your spouse may come to the faith. It may come to the faith. And, and so one of the, I want to give a quick testimony. I, I remember when I came to the faith uh, years, years ago, back in 2010, I, I came to the faith. Um, and I, I, some people would say that I've been in the faith, you know, from b before, uh, from like, you, you know, uh, because I grew up in the church. Some people would say that, you know, uh, you were always a Christian because I grew up in the church. Uh, but I don't count it as that because th there is a awakening that happened in 2010 that I never experienced prior to that. And so one of the important things for me is that when I saw the world different, when I really and in-depthly felt what is described 
in John chapter three, where it says, except a man to be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When that happened, when that supernatural uh, event happened, and uh, I, from that point, could I was awakened to conviction. I was awakened to the sensitivity of things in the spirit. I was awakened to the things of God that God wanted me to be aware of, uh, so that I, so that my life can uh, work out for the good. You know, um, you know, of, of me who loves the Lord, and I am the called according to His purposes, and and so. One of the uh, uh, powerful things about that is that at that point in my life, I was separated from my wife and I and, and my goal uh, at that point was to explore what's happening to me. And and so I, I did not at any point, you know, have a desire to pursue her, you know, even though at that moment she, she left I didn't have it because something was supernaturally happening in me. And so at, at this point, um, I'm exploring this being born again thing, reading God's word, you know, you know, by the chapters daily, you know, I mean, well, I mean, by the books in a sense, because at that time I was just so uh, uh, impressed, so uh, uh in depthly concerned about what was happening to me because I did not understand the spirit like, uh, 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 and, and it was contrary to what my leaders in churches as I was growing up was telling me. And so one of the things that happened with me is by God's sheer grace, when I became saved, my wife uh, when God eventually decided decided to restore our relationship, our our marriage, at that point, what happens is she is uh, rudely her her life is rudely interrupted as well, to where she is open to things at that point that. Uh, she had never known, had never experienced before supernaturally. And so uh, my situation by the grace of God wasn't a situation. It, it could have turned. It could have turned into an unequally yoked marriage or situation because what could have happened is she could have reconciled with me and agreed with to, to come back to me, but not accept the God that I said I served in, in fervency and in passion and uh, uh, that, that she was seeing manifesting through me. So she could have just said, okay, I, I kind of believe this new person that you are. Um, I'm seeing the fruit of it and I'm not understanding it, but you know, I agree to come back with you. Uh, and and not have taken on the 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 the, the spiritual transformation that God was doing and trying to do in her life, and so that would have put me in a position to where I was unequally yoked. But by God's grace, something awesome happened to her as well as me. And, and, and but um, so I just said that testimony for uh, for us to understand that God does work in mysterious ways. He does do things. Uh, and, and so this video, I want to make sure that I'm covering uh, some of the uh, uh, necessary keys to where it will help those that are in that unequally yoked situation, whether you, whether whatever happened, whether it was a situation to where you were both in the world like I was, and then one got saved, the other got kind of left behind to some degree, uh, or um, whether um, uh, both were saved and one kind of just fell off, you know, and back and backslid back to the world, and one remained in the face steadfast. Um, or whether it was a situation to where, um, you know, 
or, you know, and I'm, I'm going to actually talk about this as well. Sometimes Christians can, sometimes we can have two Christians in the faith and one can be passionate and devoted and, um, and, and advancing and growing in the faith. And one, and one Christian can be just kind of doing what that Christian needs to do to kind of just be where they are. They're, they're not really, you know, growing. They're more so, or if they're growing, they're growing in very small, small increments when God has, uh, 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 has given them the grace to grow in higher increments. And so one of the issues with that is that you will have a one spouse, let's say it's the man in this case, this guy wants to go and, and do mighty exploits and, and, and advance the kingdom of God and, and do all sorts of things, you know, in the faith and, and being led by the Lord, prophetically hearing from God and, and doing things according to the, the investing of uh, that God is doing uh, in his faith, you know, and then you can have a, a woman, uh, the wife, who is just kind of nonchalant, you know, very, you know, religious, you know, very worldly, you know, just kind of uh, very consumed with her outer appearance, not really investing too much in her, in her inner beauty, the character, uh, the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance, you know, all of the, not really consumed with that, just kind of doing what, you know, just kind of, kind of skating through, you know, how back in high school or back in college, you were just kind of, or maybe not you, but you knew someone that was just um, making grades just enough to pass, you know, grades, you know, like, like, a C plus, uh, a C minus, you know, uh, just enough to pass. And so, but God is requiring greater. God gives grace so that, you know, we can see greater, but we often, you know, uh, don't want to go higher because of whatever reason. And, and so that's a, that's a scenario. That's an unequally yoked scenario as well. And so many people don't consider that. Uh, but yes, that is a scenario to where one can hinder the other um, or or cause the other uh, to not reach the potential that God is desiring that that uh, person meet or that couple meet. Because when both parts, when both husband and wife are advancing according to the king, advancing in the in the fervency that they should, that collective unit is going to be explosive in the spirit. And so that God is delighted in that. God is delighted in that. He wants that. And so, so first point, first point, and I, I said this might be a part two as well, because this topic is extensive. So, um, so Peter here, Apostle Peter is exhorting the, um, the marriages, uh, exhorting people, the marriages that are unequally yoked. He's making mention here. And he's saying that um, if any obey not the word, so if any husband or any any wife is disobedient to the word, is, is not a Christian, um, uh, they also may, uh, without the word, uh, be won by the conversation of the wives. And so why is this? Because there is the lifestyle of the Christian that illuminates, like, or, 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 how can I say? There is a word that I'm looking for, um, to where the, 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 there's a pulsation, a pulsation of the grace of God, of the power of God, flowing out of the saved husband, the saved uh, uh, wife. And, and the other one has to, to reckon with that. They have to reckon with all that they're seeing, reckon with the higher standard that this person is uh, representing. 
you know, and, and seeing the favor and the beauty and the power that is uh, on on this person, on their spouse. And, and so, uh, so without the word uh, means that without uh, uh, the teaching, without the doctrine of the word, they can also be won by the lifestyle. The lifestyle itself is a doctrine that can win the unsaved spouse despite the literal teaching despite the the fact that they are not learning the literal teaching the literal doctrine of the word of god so if they're not obedient to the teachings of god if they're not obedient to the word of god if they are unsaved they can literally literally, literally be one to the faith by the doctrine that flows from the saved spouse, which impacts the unsaved spouse. And so, so that's important. Brothers and sisters, God bless you, all you guys who just joined on. Uh, I'm talking about unequally yoked marriage. Um, uh, and, and so one of the um, things uh, that I've come to find out that uh, I've, you know, recommended to individuals i've counseled uh certain individuals is prayer the need for prayer it, it, so when when it comes to prayer for the spouse uh, you you if you are in the situation to where you are unequally yoked with your spouse you know let's say your spouse is un unbeliever you're a believer or just extremely lukewarm you know let's say a spouse is extremely lukewarm and the other spouse is on fire for the lord right one of the things you have to consider is prayer fervent prayer fervent prayer uh concerning matter of fact let me read there is a verse Right here. Awesome. This verse right here. I love this verse. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 12, it says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So what is that saying? That's saying that God, he pays attention to his children, to the prayers of his children. God pays attention to the prayers of his children and he wants to make sure that his children are taken care of like any good parent would take care of uh, his or her children. Right. And so God uh, is uh, letting us know that when we pray for our spouse, when we pray for our unsaved spouse. Uh, you know, they let's say that, like, like this is saying they don't hear the word of God. When you speak scriptures, when you say when you quote certain things, when you say certain things, they're in total disagreement. They don't want to hear that. It, it matter of fact, it might irritate them to the core, you know. And so what you do is you have to remember to passionately, emphatically, you know, go before the Lord consistently about the condition that that person is in. Uh, uh, you know, and so you, you, you must make sure that you are hearing from God prophetically so that you can know where the areas are as far as the strongholds. The, where the areas of concern, where are the footholds that led to strongholds that are causing the cycles of sin in their lives, in your unsaved spouse's life. And, and so allow God to open up your awareness, your discernment so that you can uh, effectively pray so that you can see the uh, the restoration uh, the manifestation of the supernatural act of being born again in their life. And so, yes, that is the poss that is a possibility. That is what God desires. His desire is not for your unsaved spouse to perish, but for them to come to repentance, you know, through the doctrine of your life. Uh, and so the second thing I, I, I pointed out was, uh, 
Uh, so prayer w- was one. And then uh, attitude, attitude and character, attitude and character. That's what First Peter chapter 3, verse uh, at least 2 and verse 2 and verse 3 is talking about. How we, we have to make sure that our conduct is of the Lord. Our, our attitude is of the Lord. Uh, because when the grace of God is on your life to such a degree to where your character is controlled and your spouse sees that, it, it brings a a type of a jealousy, a, a well, you know, I, I want that. Man, like this person is very patient. My spouse is very patient. My spouse is very together. Man, I tell her this, I tell him this, and and it doesn't phase them. It, it, she's, she or he is very uh, common collected. I, I mean, her character is almost flawless, man. Like, wow. Like, how can I come to know this, this, this God that she says she serves that supposedly gives her the 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 grace and power which manifest in in this supernatural faith that she has, man. Like. I think I might want to ask her to pray for me, you know? And and so there is an attitude uh, that describes the doctrine. There's an attitude, there's a behavior, there's a conduct that describes the doctrine. uh, And and, and they need to see that. They need to see that. They need to uh, um, have uh, it told to them that that could be them as well. That yes, that could be you. That could be you. You you don't have to walk in anger because uh, an unbeliever is going to be enslaved by that. An unbeliever is uh, going to be enslaved by you know certain carnal uh, uh, characteristics. Not all, you know, they, they may be strong in one aspect or or, or decent in one aspect and and weak in others. Uh, but when true adversity comes, that's when you see a greater manifestation of the weaknesses in their uh, character as unbelievers, because God gives grace and, and power to his children so that they can be able to overcome. And so therefore, these sinful characteristics and traits don't have dominion over us. They don't have ultimate authority. We can rebuke, we can chasten, we can, you know, uh, 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 do things in reference to uh, um, our, uh, uh, we, we have grace to actually um, do things spiritually which affect us naturally, you know. Um, so that's important. So character, that's important. Uh, focusing on uh, demonstrating um, that benevolence, that love, that 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 truth that they need to see, so that the doctrine of your life can ultimately win them to Christ, win them to the Lord. And the last thing I wanted to talk about that kind of, that I kind of already kind of talked about was the favor of God, the favor of God that is going to be on the Christian's life. And so when they experience and when they see that favor of God, when they see, you know, as I was talking about earlier, when, in reference to the character development, as they see the strides, the changes, the the default that you used to default to, but that you don't anymore. Like, like you used to default to anger, but you don't no more. You used to default to frustration, but you don't no more. You used to default to all sorts of panic and and and, and um, inner fear, tormenting fear, not the fear of the Lord, tormenting fear. But they don't see that anymore. They see a calm, collected. They see a way about you that that they can't fathom. They're like, how? I, I mean. I, I'm, you know, they, they just can't comprehend it. And so because this world is beyond natural and we have spiritual powers uh, in reference to God's power that is available for us to have and to use so that we aren't uh, uh, enslaved by the powers of the world, the evil carnal powers of the world that um, hold people captive to the characteristics, behaviors, cycles, 
that God uh, ultimately doesn't like uh, dislikes that we um, walk in. And so uh, that's important. That's important. So favor of God, we, the, the favor of God. Um, and another aspect of the fav- favor of God is ultimately the, the fact that the, the, the way that supernatural things happen, the way that miracles happen, the way that you exercise your faith, you lay hands on the sick, you, you know, lay hands on those that are dead, you, you know, you speak things and it happens, you prophetically say things before their time and they come to pass, you, you know, uh, um, you know, have control of yourself. You, you know, all of these little things that is spoken about in the word, you know, that comes, that flows out of the believer from a natural sense. Where we, I know there's many more spiritual things, but as far as the natural things that your unsaved spouse sees, when these things flow from you, your spouse undeniably has to reckon with that in their person. They have to reckon with that. And so we have to pray and ask that God would draw them unto repentance, that they would draw them, the spirit of God would, would draw them, that they would fall in love with not just you from a natural sense, but fall in love with the spirit in which is flowing from you. Fall in love with the spirit of God and that enticing them, that encouraging them, that persuading them to come to know the God in which you serve as well. So um, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Don't let your situation of being unequally yoked hinder uh, your progression in God. Don't let that cause you to compromise and lower your standards as a Christian to fulfill uh, uh, certain carnal obligations uh, or car- carnal uh, perspectives of your spouse or of anyone else. You know, there's a standard by which we live as Christians, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we have to allow God to continue to flow, uh, to flow through and, and upkeep in a sense. And so uh, uh, one scripture that uh, I, I can tell you that definitely um, is a powerful scripture for me is the weight is in the in in the because we have to wait on the Lord. We have to wait on the Lord because a lot of us, we, we get ourselves in these situations and there, because we get ourselves into these situations when God warns us in, in advance, as far as these relationships, you know, uh, because God ultimately wants to steward and, and show you who your spouse is. But sometimes we get very impatient in this sexualized society that we live in and we, you know, step before God. And so, but God still can use us, it, but it's important that the scripture I was um, meditating on was waiting on the Lord as far as what it says in Isaiah chapter 40, you know, uh, right at the end, it says those that wait up on the Lord shall, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, you know, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. And so God wants you to not be weary in the pursuit of your spouse's salvation. God wants you to not faint in the walking of, of, of trying to see your, the walking out your life in the way that you should, um, in pursuit of trying to see your spouse saved. God doesn't want you to faint. God doesn't want you to be weary. Don't be weary in well-doing. Understand that God, you know, will reward you according to your faith, according to what you um, are constantly exhibiting. And so God wants uh, to demonstrate his love to you, uh, but it's important that you are and number one, as I was saying, a prayer warrior concerning your situation, concerning the, the advancement of the kingdom of God. Um, number two, that you are representing the Lord in attitude, in conduct, um, and, and seeing the, 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 the very manifestations of their noticing you doing this, you know, uh, 
and, and even above that, you know, that you just do it because it, it's you, because it is you, you know, you just do it. it, it that's just me. That, that is my default to be of the Lord uh, and exercise the very characteristics that the Lord himself exhibited. Uh, and number three, of course, letting the favor of God work on your behalf to see the uh, the so that your spouse can see and others can see the the grace of God on your life. So ultimately, you can um, see that day when the Lord uh, uh, invades the heart, the soul, the mind of your spouse towards the ultimate repentance that God wants to generate and salvation that God wants to bless them with. So uh, brothers and sisters in the faith, uh, God bless you. Yeah, that's true, uh, brother Guy R R Roderick. Roderick. Uh, yeah, this does happen. This is, you know, what happens in marriage as far as unequally yoked. And so we 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 know that God has a plan. You know, He has a plan. He He has a plan, and regardless of the fact that you made this uh, astronomical mistake of uh, of of uh, being with this person per se that God necess didn't necessarily delight that you be with, but ultimately his plan is for you and this person to build something monumental, something great together. But there is a suffering process. There is a wilderness process that he wants you to get past. And, and then you can have this awesome love, this awesome power, this awesome unity that God wants to build and, and, and mature in this husband and wife combo. Uh, uh, so so that, that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I, I love marriage I, because I love God's covenant. You know, there is no defilement in it as far as marriage and its purity. And, and so he that finds in Proverbs, the, the man that finds a good, a wife finds a good thing, you know, and so, uh, uh, to God be the glory. Um, um, the, the, another scripture that I can think of in, in Genesis chapter two, verse 24, where it says, uh, man shall leave his father and mother and cleave or join to his wife. And they too shall become one flesh. That, that's a blessing. Um, another scripture I can think of in Ephesians chapter, what's that? Five, uh, where, where it talks about um, uh, 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 husband's Loves, love your wives as, as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. You know, and, and at the very end where it says, um, or yeah, I think at the very end uh, or towards the end where it says, uh, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. You know, um, but then it kind of at the very, very end, it then talks about the um, mystery of uh, mystery of God that's represented uh, through marriage um, and um in the likeness of the divinity uh, of, uh, of God, the triune nature of God. Um, so, but anyway, love you brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus to God be the glory. Um, that's it for today. Um, part two definitely is coming up. Uh, we got to talk about this uh, because this is definitely vital, definitely vital teaching so that we can help strengthen ourselves in the Lord. Despite our mistakes, despite what we have done, God definitely is able to work past our uh, insufficiencies, our past our uh, our, our, our behavior that is not like him, but eventually will be like him. <laughs> so love you guys in Christ Jesus. Blessings to each and every one of you. As I always say to my brethren, my brethren, Jesus Ministries, y'all know me, um, uh, 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 feet follows focus. So focus on the Lord Jesus and your feet will follow. Walk in victory. <laughs>